Is it getting stormy out there? Seems like the rain is falling and the wind is blowing more than ever before. And every time it rains, it carves away at the rock beneath us, creating beautiful cascades and deep gorges like this. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hi, my name is Tate. This is the rock of the day. I noticed that this rock has like many sides. Some are rough and some are smooth. This white stuff, this white is from the inside of the rock. And I noticed that there's like indents and I was wondering if these were some kind of like fossils. Hey Ethan, tell me more about this rock. Thanks Tate for introducing this rock to everybody. You guys, the black color, the flat sides, and even all those little indentations can help us identify what this rock is. This is definitely a sedimentary rock, and it's called shale. Shale. And all those little indents that Tate noticed are indeed fossils. They're kind of hard to see, but you might just be able to make out in a few spots tiny little brachiopods, just like the ones we saw in episode 75. Now let's put this shale on our rock spinner. And the story I want to tell you about this rock today isn't so much about how it formed or where it came from, but rather about how it's being eroded and weathered away by rain and water. Remember episode 68 from the Grand Canyon? Well, this rock comes from a much smaller canyon, a narrow gorge that's being carved away by water right now. And I'd like to visit a scientist friend of mine who is studying how the water is eroding away this rock faster and faster every year that goes by. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Ethan. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. I'm with Nicole Fernandez. Nicole is a professor in the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at Cornell University here in Ithaca, New York. And Nicole, you have taken us to this location to show us about your research. Where have you taken us right now? Well, I've taken you to this beautiful gorge. And come on, Ethan, I'm gonna show you what we've been up to. This is spectacular. You guys, Nicole has taken us down to this gorge that cuts right through the middle of the university campus, where I guess we're gonna see what her research is all about. So what are you doing down here? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're measuring the chemistry of the stream that's cutting through this beautiful gorge. And what we're really interested in as a question is how is erosion increasing with more intense storms that's driven by climate change? And so, as you know, today we've had more storm events than we've had in the past. So the idea is to understand how it's changing now so that we can better forecast it in the future. And those storms, like the one you conjured up last yes. night, that's why the water is flowing so fast. There was a huge storm last night. So what do, you, what do you study? What do you do? So I actually study the water. And so all you see, there's a list of chemical parameters that are being analyzed, like temperature and like the turbidity or the cloudiness of the water that you see here. Yeah, I noticed that. So all that brown cloudiness that you call turbidity, mm -hmm. the, all that brownness is, that's all ground up little bits of rock, right? Exactly. So that is the water that's doing its job and carving out the bedrock as it's coming through. And what water does is it actually gives us the memory of the rock itself and all the chemical ingredients that we find in the water is coming from its interaction with the rock. And what kind of rock are we looking at here? So, that's a great question. And the way that I'll show you is by taking out a rock right from the stream itself here. And as you can see, it's a rock, it's grayish black. And we see, if you look very closely, some fossils present. So this is what we call a shale rock. Oh yeah, look at that, you guys. There's little fossils in here. And this one is about how old? 370 million years old. And now we have those ancient rocks being carved away by this water. So let's do the sample. Yes, let's definitely take a sample. And I'll show you how we do it. This is just a one liter Nalgene bottle. Nothing too, you know, sophisticated. And what I'll do here is I'll submerge it in the water. What we want to do is sort of just rinse it out. Then we'll take a sample and close it. And here you go. 
This is what the sample looks like. That's super cool. So all the cloudiness in that water is ultimately little bits of this rock. That's correct. And we're going to see it back in the lab? Exactly. Nicole, this is awesome. Can we go do this right now? Absolutely. Let's go. We'll go to the lab. All right. Let's go check out the lab, you guys. So, Nicole, how did you get interested in the geosciences in the first place? Yeah, well, growing up in Boston, uh, my parents used to get me these science encyclopedias, very thick, and I used to devour them as a kid. <laughs> I really had this passion for science that followed me through. And then, as I started growing up, I was actually very much involved in sports, became a Division I athlete in college. Oh, wow. What was your sport? Uh, field hockey. No way! Right. So, um, and I had carried that passion for science all the way through, so I was definitely the nerdiest um, on the team at all, any given The nerdiest time. field hockey player on the team. And so there, um, after I had finished basically being an athlete, I had turned my sort of passion and a lot of that energy I had from sports to science. And geoscience for me was the perfect place to sort of have this balance between really looking at very important questions and also having this sort of physical aspect to it. Um, like you could see here in the gorge where we've been yeah. walking down. That's a great story. I bet you get a lot of uh, exercise coming down this gorge every day, right? Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. <laughs> Should we keep going to the lab? Let's do it. All right, lead the way. All right, Ethan, so we've made it to the lab. Cool. And here is my geochemistry laboratory, and this is where we process chemically this water sample. Let's do it. And others like it. All right. So here I'm showing the first step in sort of processing our water and this involves just filtering out all the guck and rock bits we see here so that we get the pure dissolved phase. Got it. All right, so let's show. And now as this water gets poured through, that murky brown water is going to go through the filter. It's going to be super clear when mm -hmm. it gets down there. So now we can turn the vacuum pump off, pull that out. And now let's just take a comparison. You can see it's nice and clear. And if we compare it with the water that we see here, you can see that it's much clearer. All that murkiness has gone away. Right, so the filter did its job. So we so. get to see some dissolved anion chemistry in the water we just collected from that gorge. Exactly. And this is a pipette, which we use quite often. And, and you're here, putting it into that little vial. Now that's ready for the instrument. All right, let's do it. So this is a very sophisticated instrument, but it's really easy to use. And all you have to do is just pop your sample into this tray, then we're gonna put it back in, right? And now what we can do is it's going to filter, go through a column here, and then out to a center that's gonna count the ingredients that we're interested in. Oh, and you can see those sample actually going through right there? Yes. That's the sample. So as you can see, we have some peaks that are showing up. And each one of those peaks corresponds to a different ingredient. Exactly. So we see, for example, chloride. Chloride. This is a big one here. And what does that tell you? So what's interesting is chloride, we don't really have salts in our rock here. We're at shale. So most of that chloride is coming from the rain itself. Oh. And we are in the Northeast, and what do we do in the winter? Oh, you put down salt to keep things we melted. We do. Yeah. And that salt that's been put down, that memory of that salt is still sort of flushing, even if we're way out in the summer wow. here. Wow. So mm -hmm. these waters that you're measuring not mm -hmm. only respond to the chemistry coming out of the rocks, but also tells you about things that humans are adding to the surface, like those salts in the winter. Exactly. So there's a really intricate story that you can parse apart from one but one little sample of water and that's what makes this job so entertaining and fun. So at the end of the day the information you're collecting on this instrument from the water we collected from that gorge mm -hmm. is helping you reconstruct erosion rates in the past in the present and helping us predict the future. Yes, correct. That's fantastic. <laughs> Nicole, thanks so much for being here with us on Every Rock Has a Story. Can I take this back to the office? Definitely, take All it right, back. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> Thank you so much and we will see you guys back in the studio. How cool was that? We got to see how Nicole studies the erosion of rocks by looking at the rocky remnants in the water, the water that's carving the rocks away. Now, let's welcome Tate into the studio. Hi, Tate. So what did you think of that rock? 
It was a good story. I just had a few questions. Yeah, what are you thinking? I was wondering what type of like fossils were were like where did those fossils like come from? Yeah, that's a great question. So the fossils are mostly brachiopods, and this 370 million year old shale is what's left of the muddy bottom of a shallow sea that once covered almost all of New York State with all the brachiopods that were living there. I was surprised how, like, I was, I was really surprised how, like, this thing survived from 375, 370 million years ago. Yeah, and now Nicole is studying how all that water in the rivers today is powerful enough to finally erode it away after all that time. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool how, like, if, like, the water from that gorge, like, the, all the water was, like, going over the rocks, like, was carrying their story. Yes, yes, I love how Nicole said that the water carries a memory of the rocks themselves. Hey, I got one more question. Nicole said that she was a big-time athlete growing up. She even won the NCAA championship as a field hockey player. Tate, do you play any sports? I do baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and basketball. Okay, so are you surprised that Nicole moved from sports and is now a professor at Cornell University? Yeah, it's pretty surprising. Usually it takes a while for someone to like adjust from one thing to another. But she did it. And her passion for sports has obviously helped her develop the work ethic and the active lifestyle that she enjoys as part of her work as a geoscience professor. Tate, thank you so much for being part of this episode. In this season of Every Rock Has a Story, we've been exploring life's evolving relationship with the Earth. Now that started with the life of the past in the form of ancient fossils, like the brachiopods that Tate noticed in this rock. Last episode, Hannah showed us how frozen water, ice, carries with it a record of the atmosphere, the sky, and everything it carried inside. Today, Nicole showed us how liquid water carries with it a memory of the rock through which it flowed. By measuring the ingredients in that water, she can see how much rock is being eroded, how fast, how deep those waters are penetrating, and how much rain is powering it. Human activities are changing the amount and the intensity of storms that are reshaping Earth's surface today. And it's scientists like Nicole that are connecting rock to water to people in ways that will help us understand and plan for our future. Now, I want to thank Nicole for welcoming us into her lab, and I want to thank Tate for getting us started with all of his observations. We'll see you guys next time. What's that? So this is called a vacuum pump. So this is inducing a vacuum on the sample and it's actually gonna pull the water down. Oh, let's see. So let's see how that goes. What I'm showing here are just the basic properties of the water itself, like temperature and like the turbidity. Right, okay. I see, so temperature and turbidity, which one is turbidity? It's this F and U here. What does that stand for? Oh, it stands for, ooh. Now, let's welcome State back into the studio. Hi, State. Let's give that one more shot. <laughs> Oops.